This is the Grind It Podcast. We know just like grinding a handrail or across the coping can be challenging at times, so can life be. We share God's Word and personal stories to encourage you to keep grinding and to not give up. It's time to grind. So here's the old school skateboarder himself, Randall Tucker. Welcome to the Grind It Podcast. Today we're going to start Matthew chapter 20. And as I was studying for the notes for this podcast, I, I, I started thinking about something. And, and I, I think what people do today, like in this is March of 2023, I, I think what people do today, especially in the United States, you know, we're, we're 2,000 years or more removed when Jesus was walking the earth and when uh, they started pinning down uh, these stories about Jesus and, and how he was like and, and these things that he did and, and, and his death, burial, and resurrection and, and, and all this awesome stuff that we can actually just pick up and, and read about today. I, I think what we do now is when we read God's Word, when we actually open this book and read the Bible, we read it with this 2023 this 21st century mindset we 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 read it and especially if we have been in the united states all all of our lives and we're um just immersed in the american culture when we read the bible many times people will read it with the mindset of this 2023 american culture and concepts and lessons, yes, they, they, they still apply. But these people that we are studying about here in the book of Matthew, the crowds, the, the, the disciples, um, all these people that Jesus ministered to, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the religious leaders, they, they, they lived in another time. They, they lived in a whole other country, you know, they 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 didn't have these western ideas that that we have in the United States. In fact, we didn't even exist as a country back when the Bible uh was was going on when they were actually living this out. Uh and we didn't exist when the Bible w- was written. I mean, we 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 haven't been around in the United States very long if you think about it. And so here we are 2,000 years removed, and, and so what I, I like to do when I'm reading the Bible, when I'm studying the Bible, and when I'm sharing the Bible, especially on this podcast, is, is I like to literally try to put myself in that person's shoes. I, I want to try to see what they're seeing, and, and then I try to imagine what they are seeing and what they're dealing with and what they're feeling. And what's going on around them? I literally try to visualize it in my mind, and and I know there's a danger to that because we can uh, kind of get some because we don't really know what they're feeling. It's it's it, it, it's it's a words written on a piece of paper, um, but you know we've ex- well I you know I'm 50 years old, so I've experienced a lot of life. I've gone through a lot of stuff, so I I and everybody has feelings. And, and so we can kind of understand what they're dealing with. And so uh, when we study God's Word, just, just be careful not to take today's culture, especially in the United States, and, and, and try to understand the Bible in today's culture. Go back in their time period. And, and if you don't know anything about it, study about it. Take some time. Study about their culture. Study uh, about what things are like. I mean, they dealt with a lot of stuff that we deal with today. But, you know, we have a lot of technology. You know, we have all this. I mean, we're spoiled and pampered, especially in the United States. I mean, we're spoiled rotten. And their life was not uh, fast-paced like ours they didn't have all these conveniences like cars and airplanes. I mean, they, they were riding, they were walking a lot. They didn't have bicycles. I mean, just simple things. Their life was very simple. So when, when you read 
the Bible, God's Word. Read it through their eyes and try to understand what they're going through and how they're dealing with it. And we can take the the concepts and the lessons and apply them to our lives today. Now, with that in mind, as we're going to cover the first part of Matthew 20 today, and I, I'm I was thinking about back in Matthew 19, the Pharisees, they try to trap Jesus with a question about divorce. And divorce is, is one of those concepts that's still going on. In our, it's still a major issue. It was a major issue then. 2,000 years ago, it's still a major issue today. And so these Pharisees, they've been trying to trap Jesus quite often. And so now this time they think they're going to get him. And they're going to try to pin Jesus against what Moses said in the law. And so they, they, they try to trap Jesus with this question about divorce. And after hearing his answer to the Pharisees, his 12 followers, his Jesus' disciples, they come to this conclusion, hey, it's just better not to marry. But however, we, we know that Peter was already married. He had a wife because Jesus heals his mother-in-law of a fever. Um, so their, their way of thinking was always being, it, it was always being challenged just like, and I'm talking about the disciples, the way they thought, uh, because they, they would be just as guilty as we are that they, they have been reading the law. They've been studying the law. They've been going to synagogue and hearing sermons from the law, teachings from the law. And the law came way back to Moses. Right, and they they would use when they taught in the synagogues the law of God. They would use the authority of Moses. Moses said this, or God used Moses to say this, and so this is what these these twelve men would grow up hearing. And so they, it's kind of like where we're at today. Uh, the law came along a long time ago. This is how they've been taught, and so they have uh, formed their ideas and opinions. From what they have heard taught about the law of God. Here we are 2,000 years later from when Jesus has been walking the earth. And and we're forming our uh, opinions and, and, and our lives around what they pinned down for us just so that we could have it. Now, we, we, we actually have the law that they have. So we actually have way more than uh, of the word of God than, than they had. But... Just trying to get you to understand, put yourself in their shoes, and and we can kind of do that because we're kind of in the same boat that, that they were. They they have been raised on the law and the teachings of the law, and then this guy comes along and says, "Hey, I'm the Messiah." You know, I know the law says this, but I say to you this, and and so they're trying to wrap their heads around it, and their their way of thinking it was always being challenged, just like. What we just shared in the, I believe it was in the last podcast or a couple of podcasts ago about how Jesus would take a child and teach them humility. And you would think if anybody was going to know all about humility and be humble would be the disciples because they're walking around on a daily basis and they have been for almost, well, they have been for three years at this point. Uh, they would know all about humility and be the most humble people on the earth because they're, they're walking on a daily basis. They're living with Jesus, the most humble person that's ever walked the face of this earth. But but that wasn't the case. They always struggled with pride. Um, and so Jesus takes a child and says, hey, if you want to be the greatest in the kingdom, you got to be like this child. Uh, you got to be humble like this child if you want to get into the kingdom of heaven. It, it, because what what they're doing is they they want to be uh, the greatest in God's kingdom. They they want to sit in places of honor. Uh, Peter's asking the question, you know, what what do we get? We gave up everything to follow you. What you know, what's what's in this for us? Uh, they're they're always prideful. They they were not humble, and 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 we struggle with these same issues even today. So like I said, we could take we could put ourselves in their shoes. And we can see what's going on around them and how they're acting. And we can kind of uh, get those concepts and ideas out of the scriptures and apply them to our lives because they struggle with the same things we struggle with. And so we can learn 
how Jesus dealt with those guys and, and, and how the Word of God deals with us. Now, also in Matthew uh, 19, we saw where a young man who uh, was very rich, he owned a lot of stuff, he comes up to Jesus and he wants to know what good deed he can do to, uh, to inherit eternal life, to, to spend eternity in the kingdom of God with, with Jesus and with God the Father and with the Holy Spirit, which he wouldn't be aware of the Holy Spirit at this point. Um, but he wanted to spend eternity with God. And, and, and after Jesus told him what he needed to do, to go sell your stuff and give the money to the poor and then come back and follow me, the guy walks away sad. He, 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 he couldn't do it. He, he says no. And Jesus' says, 12 disciples, they look at him, they're scratching their heads. And, and Jesus says, hey, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than a rich man to enter into heaven. And so they start freaking out. All 12, they just start freaking out. And they're asking, then who in the world can be saved? And and this is when Peter speaks up and he says, yo, bro, yo, yo, Jesus, you know, we gave up everything to follow you. What, what do we get for our choice? And so Jesus tells them, hey, you're going to be rewarded when, it, when, when the time comes. Um, and so the disciples, they're trying to figure all this stuff out. So if you put yourself in their shoes, it, it's easy to understand why they, they struggled, even though they walked on a daily basis with Jesus. And, and it's easy for us to say, hey, you know, if I was walking with Jesus, it, I wouldn't be like them. Yes, you would. Yes, you would, because we walk with Jesus on a daily basis. We have the Word of God. We have multiple copies of the Word of God in our homes in in these United States. And, and, and we do the same things that they do. We even have the Holy Spirit living inside of us, just like they did. And and, and we still, you know, we, we goof it up a lot of times. And so these guys are trying to figure all this stuff out. And then on top of it all, Jesus... Begins telling them that he's going to die, he's going to be buried, and he's going to be raised again on the third day. And so Peter's question kickstarts us, or it, it kickstarts Jesus into this parable that we find in the first part of Matthew chapter 20, verses 1 through 16. And there's, here, here's what the parable says For the kingdom of heaven, come on, in the kingdom of heaven. It's like a landowner who went out early one morning to hire workers for his vineyard. And he agreed to pay the normal daily wage and sent them out to work. And so he, he, he's referring to the 12 disciples that he's handpicked. They, they, they are the early workers. They, they, Jesus, has, the, the owner of the vineyard, has come down to earth. He's handpicked these 12 workers to help him spread the message, right? The kingdom is here. Uh, work these miracles to prove your message. You know, get to work. Spread this message. And so, this landowner, he 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 he's out early one morning. He hires some workers for his vineyard. He agrees to pay the normal daily wage, and he sends them out to work. At nine o'clock in the morning, he was passing through the marketplace, and he saw some people standing around doing nothing. And so he hires them, and he tells them that he will pay pay them whatever was right at the end of the day. So they went to work in the vineyard. Being the vineyard is the kingdom of heaven that God owns. That's what Jesus. That's how Jesus started off this this uh, parable. And at noon, and again at three o'clock. So three more times he goes out into this village, this little city, and he sees people standing around, and he invites them to come to work in his vineyard. So at noon again, and again at three o'clock, he does the same thing. And at five o'clock that afternoon, he goes into town again and he saw more people standing around this is late in the evening now and he asked them why haven't you been working today and they replied no one's hired us and the landowner told him he says go out and join the others in my vineyard notice notice here now the owner of the vineyard is always searching for workers he's active he's not sitting in the office counting his money he's just he, he's not uh, sitting in this place of obscurity, not knowing anything that's going on in his vineyard. He is active. He is he is walking through this village. He is walking through this little town. And he, he sees people standing around. So he's searching. And he's active. And he sees these people standing around. Why ain't you working? And, and nobody's hired us. Well, hey, I've got a vineyard. Let me pay you. You can come work in my vineyard. And he's gone out at all these different times of the day. 
And when those hired at 5 o'clock were paid, well, let me back up. That evening, he told the foreman to call the workers in and pay them, beginning with the first, or beginning with the last workers first, which is that's to be the ones he hired at 5 o'clock. When those hired at 5 o'clock were paid, each received a full day's wage. They didn't work very long, probably about an hour, because they, they probably quit working around 6 o'clock because, and I'm just basing that off of being the idea on the Sabbath day, it started at 6 p.m. that evening. So I'm just assuming that they, they stopped working. Maybe it gets dark. I don't know. But I'm, that's just what I'm, uh, it, it's like they only work for an hour. That, that's just what I'm assuming here. Uh, they didn't work very long. They certainly didn't work as long as those who were hired at those earlier times, especially those who went to work that early in the morning. And so when those hired at 5 o'clock were paid, each received a full day's wage, a full day. Even though they only worked an hour or two or however long they worked, they didn't work near as long as everybody else. They received a full day's wage. It's very important. When those hired first came to get their pay, they assumed that they would receive more. But they too were paid a day's wage. Well, why would they assume that they're going to get paid more? Because they, I mean, just think about it. If if you worked 10 hours and oh Joe over here only worked two hours, well, the way our system works today, it, just say if you can make $10 an hour, that's $20 that Joe worked because he worked two hours, you worked 10 hours, that, that's, a, that's $100. But Joe who got hired at 5 o'clock, he gets $100, just like you get $100. That's not fair. That That is not fair. And that and this is actually the mindset of the disciples. And that, that's why Peter asked the question, we gave up everything. What, what are we going to get? Because we gave up everything to follow you. And, and that's why Jesus has kicked off this, this parable here. They were the first ones hired. There's people being saved even in, while Jesus is telling this parable. He's going around people are being, you know, giving their lives to Jesus. He's forgiven their sins. And basically what he's saying is, hey, they're just as important as you are. Yes, I handpicked you from the very beginning, but these people that are, are coming to me now, they're just as important as you are. But to us in our mindset, it's not right. It's not right for Joe to get $100 when he only worked two hours, and I've worked 10 hours, and I'm only getting $100. I should get more money or whatever it is. And that's what's going on here in this parable. It says uh, those that first came, that came to work that early in the morning, when they got their pay, they assumed that they would receive more. But they were only paid a day's wage. And when they received their pay, they protested to the owner, which is what we would do. Those people worked only one hour. They said, and yet you've paid, well, there, there's where I got that, that, that they, so they did quit the work day at six o'clock. I, I was right. I just needed to keep reading, I guess. Uh, when they received their pay, they protested to the owner. Those people worked only one hour and yet you paid them just as much as you paid us who worked all day in the scorching heat. And the owner of the vineyard says, he answered one of them, friend, I haven't been unfair didn't you agree to work all day for the usual wage? Take your money and go. I wanted to pay this last worker the same as you. Is it against the law for me to do what I want with my money? Should you be jealous because I am kind to others? So, so those who are last now will be first then. And those who are first will be last. So think about this Jesus is telling this parable in my opinion I, I think he's trying to take a dig a little bit at Peter's question hey we gave up everything what are we going to get that that's what he, we ended Matthew 19 with what Peter as well as the other disciples don't understand is that the goal the, the whole goal purpose and the reason why Jesus come and, and, and is going to die on the cross the whole goal is for people to enter into the kingdom of heaven where they can spend eternity with God that is the goal that that is uh, the end um, the end destination if you will yes the disciples were the first ones chosen right Jesus went around handpicking hey follow me I'll make you fishers and men 
I know you're a tax collector, Matthew, but hey, quit doing that and, and, and follow me. Um, so you can collect people, you know, or however you want to say that. They were the first ones chosen. They have given up everything. But here we are 2,000 years later, after these disciples have been long gone, and people are still being saved. They're still entering into the kingdom of heaven. Why? Because the owner of the vineyard, who is God, God's still active. Acts chapter 2, verse 36 through 41. The Holy Spirit has fallen on the disciples. Uh, they're speaking in tongues. Thousands upon thousands have gathered for the Feast of Pentecost to offer their first fruits to God. So there's thousands of people around. And, and people are starting to hear uh, the disciples speaking these tongues, and they're hearing their uh, their own languages being spoke. And and Peter stands up in the midst of those eleven because the people are saying these guys are drunk. And, and Peter says, "Hey, we're not drunk. It's only nine o'clock in the morning, so we wouldn't even be drinking now." And 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 he says, "This is what's happening." Uh, and he said, "Joel prophesied about this, the prophet Joel." And and he says. Uh, you've crucified Jesus. He, so he, he's basically preaching the first sermon after the Holy Spirit has fallen. And in Acts chapter 2, verse 36 to 41, Peter says this, Therefore let all the house of Israel know for certain that God has made him both, talking about Jesus, both Lord and Christ. Yeah, you saw him die on a cross. We saw him die on the cross, but we saw him resurrected, Peter says. And, and we know for certain, and, and I'm telling you, Israel, you, 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 my Jewish brethren is what Peter's saying, we know for certain that God has made Jesus both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. You're the ones that are guilty of this. You rejected him. Now, when they heard this, verse 37, Luke writes, they were pierced to the heart. They were convicted. And they said to Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Brethren, what shall we do? What do we got to do about this? How can we make this right? And Peter said to them, Repent. That's the first thing that come out of his mouth. Repent. You, you, you got not, it's not just saying, I'm sorry. You're doing a 180. You got to say, Yes, I am guilty of this, and, and I've got to make this right. I'm going to stop doing this. That's what repentance means. So how can I fix this? Peter, what do we got to do? Repent each of you and be baptized that's water baptism fully immersed in water repent and each of you be baptized there's a conjunction word there the word and repent and each of you be baptized in the name of jesus christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the holy spirit so repent be baptized in water uh in the name of Jesus Christ, because they the Jews would say, hey, I'm not even going to speak the name of Jesus because he is a blasphemer. And if I speak the name of Jesus Christ, I'm committing blasphemy against God. And I'm not going to do that. I'm not speaking the name of Jesus. So Peter says, you got to repent of your sins. You got to be baptized in water. And you got, you got to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And he says, you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now listen to this. For this promise is for you, talking about the immediate people that he's talking to, their children, and for all who are far off. <clears throat> and Peter's saying, this is for all these people right now. It's for all those people that are back at home when you go back to your home places. And it's for all of those people in 2023, no matter where they are on the face of the earth. This promise is for you. If you repent of your sins, you're baptized, fully immersed in water, in the name of Jesus Christ, you will receive forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. God will live inside. You read John chapter 14 and you'll learn all about the Holy Spirit. It, it, it's God the Father and God the Son living inside of us. That's why Paul says we are the temple of God. Our bodies are the temple of God because in the Old Testament, God dwelt in the temple. Now he dwells inside of us through the power of the Holy Spirit. And the only way that we can receive the Holy Spirit and God living inside of us is what Peter says. Repent, let each of you be baptized and fully immersed in water in the name of Jesus Christ. And you'll receive the forgiveness of your sins and you'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For this promise is for you, your children, for all who are far off. Now listen, this is the whole point. As many 
as the Lord our God will call to himself. See, the owner of the vineyard, he goes out into this village, into this little city, over and over it multiple times of the day and he sees people standing around and he invites them to come to work in his vineyard and they accept that invitation and they get paid at the end of the day uh well i made the point that the owner of the vineyard is always active he's always out there searching for people to come and work in his vineyard well what did jesus say about the harvest he said the harvest is plentiful but the labors are few what was he talking about people are ripe to hear the gospel message, the message of the kingdom. But at the time, Jesus had 12 workers and a, and a handful of women, the, the 12 men and a handful of women who were spreading this message about the kingdom. And they were, these men were given the power and the authority to go and cast out demons and to work miracles to back up that message. We have a lot more workers since then. Why is that? Because the owner of the vineyard, his spirit is... is drawing people to himself he is out there he is active he's not sitting up in heaven on a throne and and not doing anything he he, he hasn't turned he, he he knows everything that's going on on this earth he knows everything is going on in your life the bible says he, he knows how many hairs are on our heads he knows everything about us he's not surprised by anything and he knows about everything and he's active whether we understand that whether we believe that it doesn't matter it doesn't change the fact that god is sitting on his throne he's not some the big man upstairs and he doesn't know what's going on no he is god and he's personal and he's he can be in our hearts and in our lives on a in an in a intimate way if we allow him and see that's the whole thing that, that's the whole purpose he is active he's he, he's calling people to himself even to this day he's inviting people to be workers in his vineyard and these people in this parable accepted that. Some accepted it early in the morning and worked all day. Some people worked, or some people accepted it in the very last hour, only worked one hour, but they enjoyed the full benefits of a full day's wage. And that's what when Peter ends in verse 40 and 41. He says, and with many other words, or Luke says, and with many other words, Peter solemnly testified and kept on exhorting the people, saying, Be saved from this perverse generation. And so uh, so then those who had received his word were baptized, and that day were added about 3,000 souls. And we're thinking, oh, that's a lot of people when the church began. But uh, not really compared to the thousands upon thousands that were there. But Peter preaches Jesus, hey, you've crucified Jesus. You're guilty of this. They're they're pierced in their hearts they were convicted the jews who heard this on that day who were there for the feast of pentecost and luke says so those that gladly received his word they were obedient they were baptized they were fully immersed in water in the name of jesus christ they received forgiveness of their sins they received the holy spirit and luke says that day they were added talking about to the church this is when the church began uh they were added about three thousand souls the key word here is those who had received his word. You know, thousands upon thousands heard Peter's message, but about 3,000 received it. And were and once they received it, they were obedient. Just like these workers. They were given an invitation, no matter what hour of the day it was, whether it was early in the morning, 9 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, or 5 o'clock. They were given an invitation. They accepted that invitation. They went to work and they were pulled. They were paid a full day's wage. God is still active. He is sending out the invitation, even to you, if you're if you're not a Christian, and you hear this these this word that's been spoken to you. The Holy Spirit is inviting you. He is drawing you, and He is He is asking you to accept the invitation to accept jesus christ as your lord and savior to be baptized for the remission of your sins in the name of jesus christ then you will receive the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the holy spirit now you can choose to go to work in the vineyard or you can choose to stay out in the street whatever you want to do that that, that that's the the joy of this thing because god gives us a free will the, the people in jesus's parable they chose to go to work and they were pulled they were paid well, I keep saying pulled, but they were paid a, a full day's wage. I'll talk more about that in a second. Here's another verse, Acts chapter 17, verses 27 through 34. Paul is in Athens, 
And he's standing before this council because he's been brought in. And he, he's going to testify. And here's what he says when he's testifying to this council. Verse, Acts 17, verse 27 through 34. His purpose, Paul says, was for the... Talking about, uh, I believe it's talking about Jesus. Let's see, let me see. His purpose was for the nations to seek after God and perhaps feel their way toward him and find him. Though he's not far from any of us. See, he, he's not some God who's sitting out there on a throne and not knowing what's going on. He is an active God. He is a personal God. He is not far from any one of us, Paul says. For in him we live and move and exist. Talking about Jesus. And some of those, uh, and, and some of your own poets, Paul says, have said that we are his offspring. And since this is true, we shouldn't think of God as an idol designed by craftsmen from gold or silver or stone. And he says in verse 30, God overlooked people's ignorance uh, about these things in earlier times, but now he commands everyone. Here's, here's the key. He commands everyone everywhere to repent of their sins and turn to him. For he has set a day for judging the world with his justice by the man he has appointed. And he, is, he, uh, he proved to everyone who this is by raising him from the dead. When they heard Paul speak about the resurrection of the dead, some laughed in contempt. But others said, we want to hear more about this later. And that ended Paul's discussion with them. But some joined him and became believers. Among them were Dionysius, a member of the council, a woman named Damaris, and others with them. So, the kingdom is started with Jesus, right? You are the Christ. You are the son of the living God. Peter, upon that, that statement you made upon this rock, that I am the Christ, I am the Messiah. I'm going to build my church. One of the few times that, that the word church is actually used. And so he picks 12 men. Judas is going to hang himself. So, and he's replaced by Matthias. So it's still 12. But Jesus handpicked 12 men to help him get this message out. And Judas was a part of the that. He, he actually did go out and spread the message that the kingdom is here. And he was given the power to back that message up and to, and to cast out demons and to work miracles. And so he actually did help the kingdom and grow it. Um. But when Jesus leaves, he sends the Holy Spirit to live in his followers, which would be us, including those, like I just said, who choose to follow him to this very day in, in March of 2023. God, the owner of the vineyard, he is still active. He is still seeking. He, he is still offering a job, if you will, for those who want to work. And if we accept the invitation... You know what? We're going to get paid that same wage. The very same wage that those 12 disciples over 2,000 years ago got paid. Because we're going to all reap the benefits of heaven. And we can't even fathom what that means. I'm not even going to try to start to explain it. But the best thing about it is, the best thing about heaven is and will be that we will be with God for eternity. And that invitation has not changed. Repent of your sins. Be washed and fully immersed in baptism. And you will be filled with the Holy Spirit. You will receive uh, forgiveness of your sins and you will be filled with the Holy Spirit. God dwells inside of us. Now, that's what Paul was telling this council. And look at the responses that he gets when he tells them about the resurrection of Jesus. It says some laughed in his face. It says some wanted to hear more about it later, so they wanted to think about it a little bit. And some said, hey, I'm in. I, I'm all in. I'm with you. I, I, I want Jesus. So they were obedient to the gospel. And here's the deal. Everybody, you and me, everybody, we all have a choice. And we have to make that choice when it comes to following Jesus. For those who choose to accept the invitation and go to work, they're going to be paid a full wage, a full day's wage, no matter if they're hired at the very last hour. And they, I mean, they can literally make it in by the skin of their teeth. And they're going to enjoy the kingdom 
of heaven for eternity. And that word, what I just said, they can make it in by the skin of their teeth. It's, it's just an old saying uh, that we have here in the, in the United States. Uh, and I say that because I actually have listeners all over the world, which is pretty cool. Um, but th- those who accept Jesus and they die, you know, not too long after they accept Jesus, they, they reap the same benefits that the disciples reaped because they, they started following Jesus over 2,000 years ago. And that, that benefit includes getting to spend eternity with Jesus, who died for our sins, the Father who allowed His Son to go through it, and the Holy Spirit that is, that, that is Jesus and the Father living inside of us. How awesome is that? So, there's a challenge out there. What are you the 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 father or the the owner of the vineyard? He he's out there and he's 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 throwing out the invitation. That's why the Bible says over and over again, "Whosoever will, let him come, let her come." And so the invitation is out there. Are you going to choose to work in God's vineyard? Are you going to choose to be washed in the blood of Jesus? Are you going to choose to be fully immersed in water? And you read Romans chapter six, and it talks about how that's a burial. Like Jesus was put in the tomb. We're put in this watery grave and we come up out of that grave, a new creation in Christ, and we're filled with the Holy Spirit. And Jesus and the Father, they live inside of us. And we start this new life walking with Jesus. And we have the full benefits of our Father and of heaven. But the greatest of all is knowing that when we take our last breath on this earth, that we're going to take our first breath in heaven with God, with Jesus, and with the Holy Spirit. So here, here's what I want to say as we end this podcast. Quit standing around, friends. That's what the owner of the vineyard comes to these people and says, Friends, why are y'all still standing around? Why aren't y'all working in somebody's vineyard? Well, nobody's hired us. We, can't have, we don't have that excuse. The only people who have that excuse is people who have never heard the gospel. More than likely, well, I don't want to say it that way, but we're saturated with the gospel. Let me say that. We are saturated in the United States, especially in the Bible Belt where I live in the South. We, we, we're just Jesus to death. And, and we own multiple copies of the Word of God. And there, there's countries that, that are out there that are, that do not have this privilege. They don't have the freedom that we have and they can't even own a Bible or they'll go to jail or be put to death. And so they're having to rip pages out and and memorize it and pass one page along to to another person so they can just have a little piece of the Word of God. We just take so many things for granted in in the United States. That's why I started off this podcast by saying, don't read the Bible with 2023 eyes. Read it in the context that, that it was written in and take those concepts and apply it to our lives today. And the one thing that we can apply to our, our lives today is salvation and going to work in God's kingdom. And I just want to say, quit standing around and get to work. Make that decision to follow Jesus today. God bless you. Thank you for listening. And we'll finish up Matthew chapter 20 in the next podcast. Keep grinding. Thanks for listening to the Grinded Podcast. If we could pray for you or encourage you in any way, please email us at thegrinditpodcast at gmail.com or you can text us at 865-418-2824. If you're watching on YouTube, please click like and subscribe and you'll be notified about new episodes. If you're listening on an app, Leave us a five-star review, but most importantly, share the Grinded Podcast with a friend. God bless you, and remember, keep grinding.